Hey guys, it's Dr. Kurtz again, um, and thanks for joining me with for dinner with the doc. Um, tonight we're going back to our wellness series, um, and we're actually going to talk about dentistry and dentals and horses, um, which I'm really excited about. Um, so at the end of this video, I'm going to do a trivia question, so watch for that, um, and comment with the correct answer. Um, if you have the correct answer, you'll be entered into a raffle um, to win a special prize, so make sure to watch for that and comment uh, with your responses. Um, so like I said tonight, we're going to go over dentistry, um, and a horse's dental health is very essential for their overall well-being. You know, that old saying, you are what you eat. Well, for horses, they need their teeth to eat and get the appropriate nutrients that they need. And so it's essential for them to be able to get those nutrients, to build muscle, um, to do all those things. They need to have a good dentistry program. Um, and what makes horses so special and different from a lot of the animals we treat in veterinary medicine is they have a very unique dental structure, um, and that's based on their evolution. Um, and so kind of always think back to, I always tell people a picture about where horses evolved from. Um, you know, they were out on the plains, they had to, you know, eat grass and roughage and forages and all those sorts of things. So that's where they evolved from. Um, so for their dental structure, they actually have a pretty cool mouth. Um, so in the front of their mouth, they have incisors. Um, so those are the teeth that when you open up your horse's lips and you look in, those are the front teeth that you'll see. Um, and so really the function of those teeth is for grasping and tearing food. Um, and so if you look, there's usually a little bit, so you look at the, the incisors, there's a pretty big space, and that's where the bit lays, um, and then you have your cheek teeth, and your cheek teeth in a horse are made up of premolars and molars, um, and really their function is to grind whatever tooth that they have, so they sit there and grind it, you know, grass, hay, that sort of thing. Um, and so for their cheek teeth, these premolars and molars are lined up in a very tight line um, with no gaps, and that's called a dental arcade. So horses have four dental arcades, um, you know, they have their left and right, uppers and lowers, um, and so that's where, you know, those are responsible for grinding food. Um, in that large space between the incisors and the cheek teeth, um, male horses tend to have canine teeth, um, so they'll have four canine teeth. Um, and then the other thing that male horses have is something called wolf teeth, um, and some mares have those too, um, which we typically remove those wolf teeth when they're very young, um, just because that's where our, our bit actually sits. Um, so we'll remove those, you know, wolf teeth, and they don't have those, you know, after we remove them, obviously. Um, and so the really cool thing about horses is they, is they have a special type of tooth. Um, and so they have a tooth called a hypsodont tooth. Um, and basically what that means is the, the tooth continues to grow um, throughout their lifetime. And what I mean by grow is more not really grow, but it, it erupts. Um, and so basically what happens is with horses is they're born with their milk or their deciduous teeth. Um, and in their jaw, they form um, their actual adult or permanent teeth. Um, and so what happens as they age, they start to lay down something called cementum. They also lay down bone, and that pushes the teeth up, and they erupt through the gum line. Um, and so when you look at the horse, they actually have a crown, which is what the exposed part of the tooth is called. Um, but the cool thing is, is, you know, especially younger horses, they have a whole bunch of tooth underneath that gum line or in their jaw, and that's called the reserve crown or the body. Um, so as the horse ages, those that crown is pushed up more and more and more and more. Um, and so that's how we can tell horses age by looking at their teeth. Um, we kind of, you know, so both their cheek teeth and their incisors do that. So we're able to look for changes on their incisors. Um, they do things pretty regularly like shed caps at a certain age. Um, they develop certain things like hooks at a certain age and stuff like that. So we can age horses that way. Um, and so the other thing that we run into is because, you know, that, that tooth continuously grows, it's not like they're forming new tooth under it. So they have only so much teeth, tooth that they can use. Um, and so as our horses are living longer, um, they actually start to run out of tooth. Um, so that usually starts to happen when the horses, you know, kind of in their mid-20s that they may start actually running out of tooth that they grow out of that. Um, but that's where the expression comes from. 
um, that horses are long in the teeth. It's because as, as they get older, they have, you know, the tooth come kind of pushes up. Um, and so when you actually look at the grinding surface of the horse's tooth, they have these ribbons of things, um, you know, and so there's like, you know, you'll see like brown or like a dark color ribbon of, of you know, material in there. Um, and so that's a, the, the horse has ribbons of enamel and dentin in it. And enamel is very, very hard, um, and they use that enamel to grind food stuff. Um, and so it's really important that when that enamel, um, when they're grinding against it and they're chewing, um, that that enamel is contacted um, because that's what actually they use it to uh, grind it. Well, if something happens and for some reason that enamel is offset, what happens is that you have that very hard enamel grinding against the, the dentin, which is much, much, much softer. Um, and so then that can start to cause changes, you know, long-term changes in the tooth um, and cause the tooth to deform or have issues. Um, and so kind of the way the horse's teeth work is as they're chewing, they actually, those, those cheek teeth use more of a circular motion. Um, and so basically it grinds. And what happens is that they basically, the top tooth and the lower tooth counteract each other and they grind against each other and they kind of evenly wear each other. Um, and so that was, you know, when horses were evolving and they were chewing lots of forage, um, that grinding effect really helped, you know, you know, they use that circular motion to grind the feed stuff. As we've evolved and used horses and we're feeding them more grains and pelleted types of food, um, we're diminishing that circular motion. Um, and so actually with food and like grain and those sorts of things, they actually, instead of having that circular motion, they have a more, um, you know, kind of up down chewing motion. Um, and so that's why with horses, because they have that continued growth and then they also have that wearing and some of that wearing is because of us, you know, in terms of, you know, the things that we feed them, um, you know, putting bits in their mouth, those sorts of things, they do really require regular dental care and they're at risk for dental disease. And the nice thing about horses compared to some of the, you know, other species like dogs and cats is they actually don't fight as much with things like, you know, it's kind of rare for them to fight with gum disease um, and those sorts of things. Um, and we really ran into problems with horses when we actually lose one of those teeth, um, especially in the cheek teeth, because when you lose that tooth, the corresponding tooth, you know, either on the upper or lower, they don't have that nice grinding surface anymore. So basically that that tooth that you know doesn't have an appropriate grinding you know source it will keep pushing up and so that can really cause you know some disruption in, in the grinding surface over time it will actually wear away the other tooth that it's or the space or something like that um, and as that worsens and those dynamics change in there it can cause a lot of problems with chewing um, it causes pain in the mouth and a lot of times you know I think most people with horses have seen when their horses are painful um, in their mouth because they'll do something like they'll chew only on one side or when they have a bit they'll toss their head um, and then the other thing that can sometimes happen is as they're chewing and they're abnormal they can actually worsen it because it really you know changes the dynamics of that mouth um, eventually what this does is it leads to weight loss um, which makes sense because they're not getting the groceries in their mouth and earn their body that they need um, they'll a lot of times start, start dropping food which is called quitting um, a very common thing for people to see is they actually form balls of food that falls out of their mouth. Um, and eventually what can happen is you can have tooth infections and abscesses. Um, another very common things that can occur on the, um, a lot of our upper premolars and molars actually communicate with their sinuses. So if you have a tooth infection that can actually go up into their sinus and cause a sinus infection. Um, and so we can even have problems like colic um, just because if they're not appropriately chewing and digesting their food, they can set them up for things like an impaction colic. Um, so for a long, long time, um, you know, it was thought that horses only develop sharp points. And all we have to do is take a hand float and you know do a floating or you know grind down those those sharp points um, and then they were good to go. Um, and so usually for those horses, they actually are done unsedated. Um, and so that's what you can, you know, do the front teeth and get down those sharp points and do really good with getting the front teeth. Um, the problem is, is that's not the complete picture of dental care. Um, and so we know that that while hand floating without sedation really does address the front teeth, the problem is they have a lot of tooth in the back that it doesn't address. 
Um, and so the most important part of when your vet comes out to do a dental is actually the dental exam that they do um, because that gives us a lot of information um, and you know so that's what it's really important to have your vet come on do a dental exam um, and then kind of get an idea of what's going on. Um, it is recommended to do a dental exam every six months to one year. Um, that kind of depends on your the age of the horse, um, their history. Say you have a horse that already has, say there's a horse that I know has a missing tooth. I might do that horse every six months just because I'm trying to compensate for that tooth that they lost. Um, and it also depends on their performance levels. A lot of times with these, um, you know, horses that are really with a heavy show schedule, or a high performance level, even small changes like small sharp points or even a little bit of a hook in the back really alters their ability to be in the bridle and have collection and do that. Um, and so that's where, you know, we do recommend doing, you know, for young horses, for old horses and for horses, you know, performing horses, we do recommend a dental exam every six months. Um, and when we do a dental exam, it's a complete exam. So what we're going to do is we're going to really look at, um, you know, the external face structure. So we'll kind of evaluate if there's any swelling, um, any pain in like the TMJ joint area. Um, the other thing that we'll do is that, you know, we'll look for anything like nasal discharge or anything like that. Um, and so then, you know, once we open the horse's mouth and use a speculum to look in there, um, then we'll also kind of look at tooth quality. So we'll look for any, you know, fractured teeth or abscess teeth or anything like that. Um, and then we'll also look at their gums, you know, their lips, their tongue, um, their hard and soft palate, and, you know, a bunch of different things in there. Um, to do this appropriately, and I've got a lot of questions about this, to really do this appropriately, the horse should be sedated. Um, and so we sedate for a couple of reasons. One, you know, when they're sedated, we can really look in their mouth and get a good picture and get all of our tools and spend the time that we need to in their mouth. Um, but also the other thing is it, it puts a lot less stress on their TMJ joints. Um, if you can kind of imagine if they're not sedated and, then, or, and we just put the speculum in, or if they're not sedated and we're just using hand floats, you know, that's tough on their TMJ when the horse is, you know, fighting you and using a lot of muscles and stuff like that to fight you with their jaw. Um, and I do really recommend oral speculum um, just because to be able to see what all we need to see in that mouth. Um, and so I think a lot of people are really surprised when I actually do dentals, how far my arm is. I mean, when you look at my arm, I have a long arm. And a lot of times for me to get to the very back hooks that we'll talk about later, but the very back hooks in the mouth, I'm usually up to my elbow in most horses' mouths. Um, and so that's why you need the speculum, because otherwise it's really hard to see a lot of those structures and you know make a full visual visualization of the mouth and get a good idea of what's going on. Um, so tonight I'm going to talk briefly about some abnormalities. Um, there's a lot of abnormalities with teeth, and they're always fun ones to like, Google and see the pictures of what can go wrong. Um, but anyways, but kind of with most abnormalities that I'm going to talk about tonight, the big issue is for whatever reason, you lose that or the horse loses that normal occlusion surface that it has leading to an abnormal growth. And so when the tooth that kind of just for semantics, so the tooth that is called the dominant tooth, that's the tooth that loses that grinding surface with its corresponding tooth. Um, and so a lot of these problems we'll go over tonight are actually, you know, because of that problem where your something's not aligned correctly. So you're losing that grinding surface. Um, and so the first thing we'll talk about is sharp points. Um, and sharp points are very common on horses, you know, even performance horses who are done every six months develop sharp points. Um, and the cool thing about the way a horses, their mouth moves, is they actually occur in specific spots. So on their upper teeth, um, those sharp points are more likely to form on the outside edge of the tooth or on the buckle or the lip side. And then on the lower teeth, it's more likely to form on the inside um, of the tooth or more of the lingual or tongue area. Um, and so the big thing, uh, obviously, when you have like a sharp point, if you can imagine if you have a sharp point in, on one of your tooth that it sits there, and it can cause ulcers um, and it can cause pain. Um, it can cause ulcers on the tongue. It can cause ulcers on the side of the mouth. So pretty frequently what happens with these horses um, and the biggest thing that we hear about is that for whatever reason, when they have a bit in their mouth that they're not wanting to turn a certain direction. Um, they may start tossing their head a little bit more. That's 
unusual for them. Um, and they may start to have issues like when they're chewing, people know they'll chew on one side of their mouth versus the other. Um, and so that's a big issue with them that, you know, that's pretty nice thing about that is it's pretty easy to address, um, you know, with the dental. But that's a big thing that happens in a lot of these horses, even when they have dentals every six months to a year. The other really big thing that we see are something called hooks. Um, so basically a hook forms when the tooth is unopposed. Um, and this is really, it's very common to form on the lower, the, on the very lower back tooth um, and then on the very front uh, cheek tooth on the, on, the front, on the top and then the lower back tooth. I was, I was gesturing, but I wasn't saying it. Um, and so basically what happens is that when that hook grows, and so if you can kind of imagine, like, say you have a hook back here, and then we're asking that horse to collect, um, that horse has a really difficult time kind of hinging its jaw correctly and collecting, um, and that eventually puts stress in the TMJ joint and on all the muscles around it, and then causes some mouth pain. Um, and then also thinking about if it occurs on that very back lower tooth, how hard that is to see without having the speculum in. Um, just because, like I said, usually when I'm doing these horses, that tooth, I'm up to my elbow um, in their mouth. Um, and so that was, you know, that's a big thing that we find. Sometimes that, that hook, it gradually leads to that hook, so it forms what we call a ramp. Um, and so that's another important thing to address during a dental exam. Horses pretty quickly form those, um, and so that's what, you know, at least every year to address those hooks, but ideally if it's a performance horse every six months. Um, horses can also form something more severe called a wave mouth. Um, so basically what that is is you have several dominant teeth. Um, and so basically within that whole arcade, it forms high and low spots. Um, and so when addressing that, that's very important to actually uh, address the, the spot that's high or the dominant tooth. Um, and actually grind that down and take that back. Um, and so ideally when you do that, the corresponding tooth that has been worn down too much, it gives it a chance to regrow and kind of match it. Um, I will say that a lot of times with horses with wave mouths, they're not horses that we ever make, you know, that you know you fix them one time and then we never have to address it again. A lot of times horses that are prone to having a wave mouth, that every year we're kind of readjusting the same teeth. Um, and that's another really important part of dentals um, that can be a little frustrating um, just because, you know, what I always have a conversation with people is that, um, you know, there's only so much tooth that we can take out per session. And so if the horse has a really big issue, um, say like a wave mouth or a really bad step or something, you know, along those lines, um, you know, we're a little bit limited in how much tooth we can take off. And then the other thing is we don't want to completely remove the grinding surface because then, you know, that causes issues with them being able to, you know, chew their food. Um, and so that's what this is another, you know, like a wave mouth. You know, usually it's something that we have to address for the horse's entire life and do regular dentals, you know, every year, every six months, kind of as a horse needs it. Um, another big thing is called a step. Um, and a step is, again, when you have a dominant tooth that doesn't really have an opposing thing. Um, the most common places we'll see a step is when they actually lose the, the corresponding tooth. So say that they have you know, they lost a lower tooth, well then that upper tooth will be super long um, and form a step because they lost that grinding surface. Another cool one that we see is something called a shear mouth. Um, and so shear mouth is when a horse uses only one side of its mouth and it actually grinds unevenly. Um, and the cool thing about shear mouths is they're actually really easy to identify just looking at your horse. If you open up their mouth and look at their incisors, their incisors, will actually be a sheer mouth too. Um, so anyway, so that's what's something you can see and kind of recognize um, and address. Um, the other big thing that happens is that horses form caps. Um, and so basically what caps are is kind of like their baby teeth or their milk teeth or their deciduous teeth. Um, and so basically those are sit on top of permanent teeth. And as the permanent tooth erupts, it kind of pushes off this cap and it comes off. Well, it's pretty frequent that we run into babies, um, which just usually happens about two and a half to about four and a half years of age, um, that they have an issue with shedding that cap. Either the cap gets stuck 
or the cap gets fractured or something along those lines. Um, and so what we do during the dental is that we can see a, a cap that's a little bit of an issue and we can actually just pop it off. Um, and then that way we have an appropriate grinding surface again. If it's not addressed, then what can happen is then you can have lifelong changes in that tooth, just if you kind of picture that, you know, something's impinging that. Um, and it is something that can cause these guys, you know, a lot of pain. And so that's why those are pretty important to, you know, monitor and address. Um, and then the other thing is that we also check the incisors as well. Um, those are also hypsodont teeth. Um, so they do the same thing where they keep growing. Um, and so what we actually do is we usually address the cheek teeth first, because if there's an issue with moving or something like that, then we address in the cheek teeth and then we pull off the speculum and we look at those incisors and kind of, you know, make changes as needed. Um, but they can do the same thing with the incisors. They can break teeth, they can lose teeth, they can have, you know, abnormal growth, they can have hooks, those sorts of things. And so um, what a typical dental exam for us uh, and what we do is so what I normally do is I come up and I do a physical exam on the horse, you know, but prior to any sedation, I want to make sure that the horse is healthy, able to tolerate and those sorts of things. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll sedate the horse. Um, and then usually what I do is then give a shot of banamine, which is a pain medicine. Um, and kind of my, you know, reasoning for this, um, I know whenever I go to dentist, I guess I don't maybe floss, which I don't know how I can floss anymore, but that's what they always say. Um, but anyway, is that, you know, your gums kind of bleed, you know, we have a lot of tools in there, you know, that sort of thing. And then we're also making changes in the dynamics of those tooth that may be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and so that's what I usually give them a little bit of banamine before we start um, and so once they're appropriately sedated um, what we'll do is we'll give I'll put the speculum in and raise their head up um, we use like a sling um, but you'll see lots of different things some vets use stands um, some vets make people hold them which is a horrible job I do that in vet school a lot um, anyways and what we do is we use a combination of motorized tools um, so what the motorized one is a Dremel and basically what that does is it allows us to be a lot faster um, and for me what I do is I use the Dremel you know take down those really big hooks that you know with a hand float I'd be sitting there you know working on it forever that I can quickly address it with the Dremel um, and then what we do I do is then I come back with the hand float and I kind of smooth everything out you know take down any sharp points you know kind of kind of help everything out and like I said I do recommend doing a full dental and exam um, every six months for horses under five years old um, which you know like I said they lose those caps until about four and a half so that's why we need to do that and with those young horses it's really important to address things early um, and make sure we're not setting them up for lifelong problems from just neglect kind of thing. Um, and then also of course is over the age of 20. And like I said, you know, kind of once they get over to be, you know, 20 years old and older, they'll start getting to the end of the lifespan of that, that tooth. Um, so they'll start, you know, losing teeth or having issues with teeth or, you know, the teeth, tooth weakens, so it fractures. Um, so it is really recommended uh, to do them. And then, like I said, for those performance horses that are just, you know, we're asking them to do a lot in terms of collection with that fit and stuff like that, um, it's very important to do them every six months. Um, and the real reason with that is that really impacts their comfort level um, and, you know, kind of helps them out. And as a practice, you know, like I said, that's something that I've been asked about a lot, you know, in terms of do we have to sedate them? Do we have to place a speculum? And I would say I really strongly recommend it. Um, and again, our reasoning for doing the sedation, um, you know, really is to kind of let us, one, visualize everything that we need to see back there, but then also kind of relax some of those muscles and then put less stress on that TMJ joint when the speculum is in. And then you really need that speculum to be able to see the whole mouth, you know, to evaluate, like I said, when we, we look in there, we're looking at the tongue, we're looking at the cheeks, um, we're looking at the palates, um, and kind of really looking at everything in there. And to be able to get back where we need to get back to, um, we really need that speculum. Um, so to do it without that, it's really not the whole story of the mouth. Um, and so that's why I really recommend doing that. Um, so as always, if you have any questions or anything like that, you know, comment here. Um, you can also call or text us um, and we'll try to answer all your dental needs. Um, and then the last thing is the trivia question. So again, just comment and if you have the correct answer, we'll enter you into a raffle um, and, you know, to win a special prize. Exciting. Um, and so the trivia question is how many teeth does an adult male horse tend to have? Um, and so that's what the average adult male horse.
Alrighty. Well, that's it for me tonight. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions, just, you know, shoot me a message. Thanks.